So let's look at our first example. We have an old cathode ray television, and in the cathode ray television, electrons are shot forward to make the pretty pictures. So we have an electron. It accelerates from a velocity of 3 times 10 to the fourth meters per second to a velocity of 5 times 10 to the sixth meters per second, and it does so in across 2 centimeters. What we want to know is for how long was it accelerating, and what? Was the acceleration. Now, when we are trying to solve a problem in physics, what we're trying to do is use the tools that we have to move from known quantities to unknown quantities. And we'll do that using all of the tools. Up to now, you have several tools. We have motion diagrams, we have graphs, we have pictures we can draw, and labels that we can give those pictures that will allow us to talk about different quantities. We have fundamental ideas and concepts. And definitions, uh, such as the definition for velocity. And we also have then derived equations like the kinematic equations. And what we're going to try and do is use the most useful tools to create a picture of the physics that shows us what the shape of the solution will look like. Not necessarily what the answer to the problem is, but more what the direction we need to go in that will get us to the answer. Now, I will tell you right now, setting up a problem is the hardest part. And so I'm going to walk you through this first example. So we have this electron and it's being accelerated. If we were to draw the motion diagram of the electron, it should look something like this. It starts at a time with a velocity and it begins to be accelerated. So it begins to speed up, moving faster and faster and faster. And looking at this, you can see that there is an acceleration in this direction. We're going to just go ahead right now and choose that to be our positive direction. So that this gives us a positive acceleration. If we were to draw a picture of the electron, it'll look something like that. I'm not a great artist. It starts at some initial time in its initial location with a velocity, an initial velocity, which we know. It accelerates, as we said, in this positive direction. And it reaches at some later time a final velocity. at some final position. Okay, So here, we drew the motion diagram so we could get a sense of the, of the physics. We've now drawn ourselves a picture, and we've labeled it with all the relevant quantities that we think we might need. <clears throat> now we want to make a list of the things we know and the things we want to know, so that hopefully, looking at those things, we can see whether or not we need we can use the kinematic equations. Let's see, we know our initial velocity. That was given to us in the problem. That was 3 times 10 to the fourth meters per second. We also know our final velocity. That was 5 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. We also know then how what the distance was between these two points, and that was two centimeters. And let's go ahead and convert that right into meters because we're dealing with meters per second, so we won't have conflicting units. Two centimeters is 0 0.02 meters. Now, we weren't given any constraints on our time or uh, the location where we started, and so we get to choose where that is, meaning we can choose that our initial position 
to be zero and our initial time to be zero because we're not told what we have to do as far as initial position or time. And choosing that, that means we also know then what our final position is. That is gonna be two centimeters. Now we wanna know time and we wanna know acceleration. At this point, we've drawn a picture, we've written down everything we know, we've written down what we want to know, and we can begin to search our toolbox to see if we can figure out how to move from known to unknown. Everything here is velocities. Sounds like we're probably going to use kinematic equations or maybe the definitions of velocity and position and acceleration. <coughs> right off the bat, we can see that this is a constant acceleration problem. And so we've already satisfied the first requirement of using kinematic equations, and that is that we have a constant acceleration. So our kinematic equations are probably going to be a good bet. Looking at our equations, we want to see if we can move from known to unknown in one step. Okay, we'd like to be able to go from something we know to something we don't know in one step because that's going to be the easiest. Not always possible, but if we can do it, that's the best. Looking at this first equation, we've got an initial position, a final position, time, which we want to know, and an average velocity. We don't know what the average velocity is. We could figure it out. But again, we want to go in one step, so that's not a good equation. This second equation, that gives us the average velocity. We don't care about that, so let's leave that out. This third equation has too many unknowns. It has our acceleration and our time unknown, so that's no good. Third equation, same thing. Time and acceleration aren't known. So this last equation hopefully gives us what we want. Let's see. We have a final velocity, we have an initial velocity, those we know. We have a final position and an initial position, those we know. The only thing we don't know is this acceleration. So this equation will get us to our acceleration in one step. It'll move us from our known quantities to our unknown quantities in one step. If we solve that for our acceleration, we'll end up with an equation for our acceleration of our final velocity squared minus our initial velocity squared over two times the quantity of our, min our final position minus our initial position. Now, before we go any further, let's check our units. On top, we'll have units of velocity, that's meters per second, squared, so we got to square both of them. And on bottom, we're going to have units of distance. Now, anytime we divide, we can just multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to do that. Multiply by 1 over distance, which is meters. If we've done it right, we'll come out with units of acceleration. So meters cancels with the square. And we end up with meters per second squared. Sure enough, we have units of acceleration. So this is a good bet that we are on the right track. When we plug in our numbers, and I'll let you go ahead and do that, we end up with an acceleration of about 6 times 10 to the 14 meters per second. So that got us our acceleration. Now that becomes a known. Now we can move on to try and find our time. finish up, we want to find the time. We found the acceleration. So now if we go back and we look at our equations, one stands out. There are many, there are several we could use, but one stands out as being the simplest. And it's number three. We have a velocity, 
a final velocity, we have an initial velocity, we now have an acceleration, and all we need to know is our time, which is what we're after. So if we solve this equation for our time, we're going to get that our time is equal to our final velocity, v1, minus our initial velocity, divided by our acceleration. Now, again, we're going to take a moment and see, is this reasonable? Let's check our units. On top, we're going to have a subtraction, but in the end, we'll have units of velocity. So that's meters per second. And on the bottom, we're going to have a unit, units of acceleration. So anytime you divide, you're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So we're going to have meters per second squared. And what we hope is that we'll come out with time in seconds, a unit of seconds. Let's see. Meters cancels with meters. Seconds cancels with the square. And sure enough, we get units of seconds. So that tells us that we're probably on the right track. Let's just finish up here. If we put in our values, we end up with a time of about 8 times 10 to the negative 9 seconds, or in other words, about 8 nanoseconds. That's a pretty fast electron. So to recap, we drew ourselves a picture and label, uh, chose our variables in such a way that it gave us a pretty good idea of how we could approach the problem. We wrote down all of the things we knew, we wrote down what we wanted to know, and then we looked at our toolbox, we looked at our kinematic equations and said, is there a way to go from something we don't know to something we want to know in one step? In this case, we could. In future problems, we not, might not always be able to go there in one step, but we could get pretty close.